Ever wonder how to give a blank canvas condo vintage urban chic with soul? Well, I'm going to show you how right now. Great design comes from a winning formula. Mine is as basic as a set of building blocks. Put them together, add up the results, and you've got a sensational room. Today's case study is Gabe's brand new blank canvas condo. I'm showing you how to give a space like this instant urban chic and lived in appeal. The style I'm looking for in my living room and dining room would be contemporary, clean lines. This is a lot of space. It is a good amount of space. And it's long and narrow. What does this remind you of? I think it looks like a gallery. Yeah. I mean, I see artwork from floor to ceiling, gallery wall. That is a bold statement. Well, I'd say you need to start with the direction, so why not be bold? And when I looked out the window, I saw a vista of historical buildings in Gabe's backyard. Great views! I started thinking about old black and white photos of the city, and shazam, I had my jumping off point. I think black and white. The crispness of black and white, so that you're thinking about the view, thinking about creating a very, very classic space. Mm -hmm. We do need to inject some soul and some character in some way or another. So, exactly what I was thinking. I'd like to illustrate how you can decorate a brand new condominium with vintage pieces so that it doesn't look like a strange time travel experiment. We also need to address this huge window, not only for privacy and light control, but to help soften the room's hard edges. However, I want to do just the opposite with the stucco ceiling. Could we celebrate scraping off the ceiling? To me, stucco does not say chic, so it has to go. When I open that front door and I walk into my place, I want to be able to be wowed every time I come home. To achieve urban style, we'll start with soulful vintage furniture. Pull together a classic black and white scheme with fabrics, address the windows and floors, smooth out the stucco ceiling, add sophistication through lighting, and bring the walls to life with art. But before we do anything, we have to figure out where everything is going. When buying a new condo, you'll have plans from the builder. So spend a little bit of time mapping it out and trying to find the layout that works best for you. I'm going with a long sofa on the wall. Yeah, sofa has to be here, based on the view. 100%. Then two chairs as a room divider, and these will face the view. You want to be up near the window? Based on the view. Next, a single chair, something sculptural. This will allow great access to the patio a pair of chairs which can just float. Lastly, a round table with six chairs and finish it off with a credenza for storage. With classic black and white as our jumping off point, Tommy and I source for historic city shots. Hey, what do you think about this one? This is a great one. The history of the city. It's an architectural detail. This is amazing. But filling a wall this way will be way too expensive. So we're hitting the streets to snap lots more shots. If you've got a camera, you can make your own art and save a bundle of money. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Look, what do you think of this? I love that it's already in black and white. Most digital cameras now will allow you to take your photos in black and white, so the exposure and the contrast is all right, and you don't have to convert them once you download them. Plus, you're seeing exactly what you're getting in the viewfinder. I know. Isn't that great? It's awesome. You don't have to go with expensive frames, either. Ours are ready-made. Just have the mats custom cut, and that way each photo will look professional. Decorating a brand new space and making it look like a personal style statement can be tough, especially if you're looking to use all new pieces of furniture. What's my advice? Head out on an adventure in search of the unique, the unusual, and the vintage. Um, oh. First I saw sale $5.95 from $14.95. Immediately I had to know what that was. Then I looked and it's a black and white table. In a small dining area, a round table is an effective choice. It floats, offers flexible seating, and optimal circulation. We're doing a black and white room. We are. We love things that are unique and different. Correct. I've never seen anything like it. I'm crazy about it. We're getting it. It's unusual. 
We're on a roll now. The quest for personality pieces continues. That is a nicely proportioned chair. You've got an ample seat, yeah. but you've got such a streamlined arm that it doesn't end up being a big chair when all's said and done. When you're looking at vintage furniture that you're thinking about reupholstering, never, never, never look at the fabric. Always make sure that it's sturdy and not wobbly. And here's one last thing to check. Lift up the seat cushion and see if there's an original label from the manufacturer. This is made by Dunbar, a great American manufacturer, so you know you're getting a terrific piece of furniture. And hey, you might find some change in there too. Let's see what else we can find. What do you think about these chairs? Don't you find them a little rustic? I just look at them, I think the texture is interesting, the fact that they're carved, it's a drop-in seat. They're only $350. I mean, by the time we're done, it's a $400 chair and they're kind of neat. You're going for a very eclectic mix here. I say yes. So that's vintage and eclectic. How about chic? Wouldn't this make a great media unit? I love that it floats. No legs. It's got good storage and you can also use it for a bit of display. You can put your TV on it. It's everything we need and it's vintage and it's $5.95 and it's cool. Okay. But you still need a standout piece, an iconic style statement. Here's a good option as a single armchair. It's vintage deco. It has a good shape to it, so it can sit somewhere where you can almost see it from all angles. Okay, this is $650, so even if I reupholstered it, which I think I'd want to do, I could probably still be all in for about $1,000. For a great looking chair, it might be well worth it. To turn a blank canvas condo into a space with soul, fill it with unique furniture. Have the layout take advantage of the views, and give personality with your own inspiring photos. Next, the furniture search continues and we find fabrics to max out a monochromatic scheme. Did you and I get the same fabric? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. This blank canvas condo is getting some chic urban soul. Its historic neighborhood led us to a black and white scheme. I think black and white, a very, very classic space. Mm -hmm. And the vintage chairs add a cool urban vibe but we still need a sofa. To get the maximum payoff in contemporary style and comfort, I usually opt for vintage chairs, but I like the comfort offered by a brand new sofa. Option one. The arm is a little wide for my taste and I'm not sure about the button tufting. So how about that? That feels really traditional to me. How about this one? Tight back, thin arm. Worried a little bit that it might be a bit feminine though. Okay, well, I don't know if it's saving the best for last. It's definitely the worst photo. This is a frame that exists at the manufacturer. This is a don't judge a book by its photo. <laughs> it doesn't have legs yet. Right. The one that looks the least like a sofa actually seems to me to be the better choice only because the gentle curve on the top of the back really is nice to break up our straight lines. Right. And it has the arm that isn't too narrow, isn't too fat, nice and masculine, show with leg. It has all the things that I would want it would be difficult for this to come out looking any worse than it does in the photo. It's got good bones. There you go. At $2,700, the new sofa is a splurge, but it's important for durability and long-lasting comfort. For a coffee table, we're back to vintage. This is an amazing table for the price. It's made of burled olive wood. This has some interesting patterning. It's light, so it's not gonna feel like you just dropped a giant heavy block in the center of the room. And I don't think we want everything to be sleek, shiny, sharp. I think you need some natural elements. This has soul. Totally. Here's a tip. When buying vintage, remember to keep some money aside for refinishing and repairs. You can do it yourself, but if you found something really special, best leave it to the professionals. For about $600, the Jet Black Entertainment Unit and Olive Wood Coffee Table are getting a new lease on life. With our furniture found, Tommy and I head out to find fabrics in our monochromatic scheme. Black and white, and their sidekick, gray. Did you and I get the same fabric? <laughs> Looks like it. I think this must mean it's the ideal one. 100%. It's a nice, thick weight. This could just work on our vintage lounge chairs. The question is? Test to see if it pills, because it's wool. Whenever I'm looking at wool fabrics, I always take it, rub it together as fast as I can, and then look at it across the top to see if the fibers are pilling. It's my own way of testing to see if it's gonna stand up to regular everyday usage. A hundred samples later, cause you've gotta consider everything, 
Tommy and I are ready to pull this monochromatic fabric scheme throughout the space. Okay, let's start with the fact that we've got a giant wall of windows and I think we need to control the light. And privacy is an issue as well. Our best route is to think about polyester uh -huh. because it won't get broken down by the sun. It's 100% washable. Okay. What if we had more impact? Love that. Well, this would give you the privacy factor. And so, still let a lot of light through. I mean, you're holding it in front of a window and I can see a lot of light coming through it. The stripe is delicate enough mm -hmm. that I don't think it'll be overpowering. $6.99 a yard, polyester and rayon. What do you think of this? This I love. Bold, graphic, simple, basic, modern. So if we're talking about a pair of chairs or an occasional chair, that wide stripe always looks crisp. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about another stripe. Okay. How about this on a bench? Great texture. And I think that it's nice if you're gonna have a few hits of the dark to have it with that pop of white. Let's talk about a sofa. May I show you what we have today on the buffet, sir? <laughs> Our sofa's gonna be probably something with a- Oh, get your fingers off that. You don't like this. $97.99 a yard, hey, never hey, gonna happen. Hey, sue me for being drawn to quality. How would you feel about something in here? And now I'm gonna be shown to be the extravagant one. Yeah, $32.99 a yard. Sure, we can afford that. Mm -hmm. It looks like linen, mm -hmm. but I think it'll wear like iron. A black and white room can be harsh and high contrast by dressing the room in shades of gray. It's a softer, less severe way of creating a monochromatic mix. One thing that's detracting from the contemporary feel of this new condo is the stippled ceiling. If you're in this situation, it's best to deal with it before you move in. It's really messy. It's basically gonna be two to three days, two guys, some scaffolding, and a scraper and some water. Why some water? In order to loosen it, they spray it with water and then they scrape it off right. and it collects on the protected floor and then they wash it and it's ready for paint. For our 26 by 16 foot ceiling, we got quotes that ranged from $1,100 to $5,000. So call around to get the best price. If you can save yourself $3,900 just by making one phone call, it's definitely worth it. This blank canvas of a condo is getting soul and style. We started with a classic monochromatic scheme, smoothed out some rough edges, and found vintage furniture to give it an always been here look. Next, we're dressing up the walls and brightening with industrial chic lighting. What if we did a series of three pendants? Very pretty. This blank canvas condo is becoming urban chic with an infusion of vintage pieces and a monochromatic scheme. That is a nicely proportioned chair. The vintage furniture selection is being set in a modern context thanks to fabrics, a new sofa, and some more design tricks. If you need to travel down a long hallway every time you enter your home, why not make the journey more interesting by putting wallpaper on the one hall wall that leads to the main space? It creates a feeling of anticipation and excitement. Oh, you got my samples. I got your you note and your samples. I think they look fantastic. You have basically sourced every single black, gray, and white paper in the universe, and they're all here. Do you like any of them? Yeah, I pulled this one aside because I like that quite a bit. Aha. I love this sort of masculine quality of it. For a guy's condo, I think it works really well. I just wonder, do you think that might be a little strong? It might be. I love that one. I keep connecting with a circular motif. Yeah. The deco chair, our table is round. Yeah, we need to have some kind of contrast from all of the straight angular elements that we have in this space. Right, that's what the circular motif does. It mm -hmm. softens all the hard edges of living in a box in right. the sky. But we're not finished there. Are you feeling crafty, my friend? Always. This pre-primed canvas from an art supply store is $7.75 a yard, which okay. means you can do a piece of art that is three feet by more than four feet for $7.75. But you can do a piece of artwork only if you're talented enough to make it pretty. Okay, so I figured that in order to make it really, really work, we should work with something that is decorative. I love these. Vintage printmaking letters, and they cost about 2 to $5 a piece. Mm -hmm. And then acrylic paint, a printmaking brayer, mm -hmm. which is a hard rubber roller. Yep. And I thought we could just go random letters and fill this canvas. Okay, why don't I start at one end and you start at the other, and we'll meet in the middle. The trick to a dynamite DIY is knowing what you can do yourself and what you should get help with. 
Tommy and I printed the canvas, but then I sent it out to be stretched and framed. That's why it looks like a pro did it. My favorite time on any project is load-in day, when everything's being delivered. What fun! If you've got big windows in a contemporary space, blinds aren't the only solution. What I love about drapes mounted on the ceiling is that they are either all the way open or all the way closed. This is the way you get privacy and a great view. Isn't that fun? I picked up this pair of chrome tables, vintage, $2.95 for the pair. One had a broken piece of glass and the other was chipped. Here's what I did. Instead of going with plain clear glass, this is sandblasted Starfire glass. If you sandblast normal glass, it has a kind of a greenish tone to it. Starfire is colorless, so it goes white. Now my tabletops are a perfect tie-in to everything else in the room. That's worth paying attention to. Oh, Tommy! Oh, this looks familiar. Don't you find them a little rustique? What do you think of it now? It totally works in here. It looks pretty Sorry? good. It totally works in here. You don't think it looks lodgy and out of place? Honestly and truly, now that we have all of the different elements in this room, I feel like it needs a little warming up, and this is doing it. See, you were a doubting Thomas, and now I'm a gloating Sarah. But a vintage look is not just furniture. You'll want to extend the theme to include the lighting as well. What do you think about this pendant? It's great. So here's what I was thinking. In the front window, what if instead of just doing plain old pot lights, what if we did a series of three pendants that ran across the window and then they'd wash the drapes? Very pretty. They're only about $200, so it's pretty close in price to putting in a pot light. Yeah. Plus, don't you think they're a little bit more interesting? They have more character. And speaking of character... <gasps> Look what I found. Look what you found. Where were you? I was down in the basement. So this, to me, is a lot of light fixture for the money, for 600 bucks. Like, do you think we could have it fixed up and restored? Sure. So cool. This is a 12 light fixture. It's a lot of light. And we have one junction box in this entire space, so it's got to be a heck of a light fixture. It's terrific. When installing a chandelier in a contemporary space, make sure you go for something cool and linear and contemporary and avoid swirls and curly cues. Lighting done. Now let's cast our gaze to the floor. When you're dealing with one big room, I suggest you make one strong statement with an area rug. We created one big high impact carpet by sewing two smaller ones together. What did we achieve? Great effect, great price point. Well, that's effect. How about impact? You can create a gallery look by filling an entire wall with your own black and white photos. Tray chic. If the photos are your own, hey, you can be doubly proud. To create a city chic condo from a blank canvas, consider a classic black and white scheme. Give it soul with vintage furniture, style with great lighting, and a few personal touches. What's next? A chance to sit down and enjoy it. Our case study? To give a new condo chic urban appeal and touches of vintage soul. A monochromatic scheme frames up a rare open city view and the right layout makes the most of it. One-of-a-kind furnishings, lighting, and do-it-yourself artwork give this blank space lived-in appeal. Let's take a look at the results, shall we? So you've decided you want it to be black and white. How best to achieve that? Well, make sure you minimize the amount of black. Try and use it as an accent rather than the main motif. The result, I think, is a room that feels as though it has that level of sophistication, but it also has a really inviting and accessible quality, which is what we're going for when we're trying to create a home for someone. I want to occupy and use every section of my place like I want to sit at the dining room table and in the past I would sit on the couch and eat dinner so now I want to sit there and take it in and look around. When it comes to fabrics in a black and white scheme it's best to use predominantly solid colors. If you use too many strong black and white patterns it will be distracting and overpowering. Most new condos look new and unexciting. This one looks like a collection that's been curated over a decade. And that is the payoff with buying vintage.
I'm sort of a new believer now in mixing old with new as opposed to just buying all new. We had to have some legitimate design in this space because we started with something that was so generic in so many ways. Sarah and I decided to start with some really great furniture and we may have spent a little bit of money right out of the gate, but I think in the end it was really worth it. Instead of being a solid table and acting as a block, the glass tabletop offers an airy view through to the other room. Black and white can be a very chilly palette. The trick is to incorporate items that have texture and that have some warmth. So the wood tones used in the space become very, very critical. If you're assembling a collection of vintage upholstered furnishings, all the shops that sell furniture will also have an offering of accessories, so you can make sure that everything's headed in the same direction. In a room that is predominantly light and bright and white and airy, our black shades on our table lamp and our floor lamp add a little bit of a masculine nod. I can say that I've never created a more dramatic wall of artwork with a bigger payoff. I filled in with two other images on the opposite wall, but everything on the main wall was taken by yours truly. It's incredible what can be achieved with a digital camera and a few hours on a nice day. The space feels really slick with everything in black and whites and grays. It's a cool look. I like it. If you're living in a brand new skyscraper, there's no need to go without style and substance. You can create a unique and individual expression of you. I'm going to be watching you. OK. No! Don't do that. <laughs> and he hit something.